our readings take us on a bit of a, a windy road today and, until we arrive at this beautiful image of the transfiguration. It reminds me of a day when I was in high school. It was a brilliant summer day and this beautiful girl picked me up in a convertible and we drove through the back roads of the promised land of the west side of Evansville and the wind was blowing through my already thinning hair and the smell of freedom was in the air as the stalks of corn were just swaying lightly in the breeze. I mean, just to think of it now brings this spirit of nostalgia for uh, that, that feeling of just being free and young. Those days are long gone now. I'm kidding, that's not true. But there's something of that day in our readings today a sense of adventure, a sense of freedom from the worries of life and this unmatched glory. It begins with Abram, soon to become Abraham. God tells him to leave what is familiar, to leave his family behind, his kinsfolk, and to go out to an unknown land. God doesn't say, go to this place that I've set aside for you, you'll find this and this and this. He said, just go out. And I'll tell you when you get there, just go to this unknown land because God needed Abram to let everything else go so that he could introduce him into something new. And Abram did it. He left, he left everything behind to go to this unknown place with no family, no friends, nothing to call home, just went. And we might ask, what, what gives someone the the courage to, to take that kind of risk? And the answer really comes in our psalm response today, which reminds us that the Lord is trustworthy, that his eyes are upon those who trust in him and that he will deliver us from all the things that seek to harm us. And at a certain level, we know that, like there's something in us that knows that because there's something in our hearts that, that longs for something more, that longs to see something more. And, and we know that we didn't put that there, that, that God placed that longing in us. And so deep down, we know that it's the Lord who is calling us, who, who is trustworthy and wants to lead us to this unknown place. And St. Paul, reminds us, really, he kind of keeps the car moving for us, and he reminds us to take the next step in this adventure that God is inviting us to. He reminds us that life certainly will have its share of hardship, that things will get a little windy. Paul says that God saved us and called us to a holy life, but not according to our own design, but according to his plan for us that his design will be full of, of twists and turns and we won't always know where we're going just like Abram. But that God has a place. He has a place prepared for us, a place that he's calling us to inhabit, a place where our faith can grow and grow and grow. But we know that any move from one land to another always comes with it, This always brings with it this this challenge, I mean, even if you have TSA pre-check these days, it's still hard to move from one land to another. I mean, there's this need to, to leave things behind. You know, if you're going on a cruise, you can't pack up your whole house and take it with you to this five by 10 cabin that you're staying in. There's a need to leave something behind. And this is what Paul is reminding us of. If we're gonna go on this adventure of faith, that the Lord is calling us to, then we have to let go so that we can receive more fully what the Lord wants to show us. And what is it that the Lord wants to show us? This is what we see in our gospel today. Jesus shows us this image of unmatched glory just this remarkable vision. And Jesus reminds us that we're not just headed to that vision. Now, he doesn't just wanna show us that vision, but Jesus wants to pull us into that vision. 
Jesus doesn't just want to show us glory. He wants to glorify us. He wants us to be a, a, a filled with this presence of light so that when others look at us, that, that they see the glory of, of Christ reflected in us, present in us. I can say on that day when that girl came and picked me up in her convertible, I didn't, I didn't just want to see that girl and watch her drive away in her convertible. I wanted to be in the car, trust me. God wants us in the car. God wants us on board so that he can take us into this experience of glory. And we can't go into that experience of glory unless we leave things behind and go up the mountain. There, there is a journey that is, that is always necessary if we're going to be led to this vision for which we are made. And friends, this is, this is the work of Lent. All the practices that we've taken on, I, I hope that we're using these practices as an opportunity to let go of what doesn't matter, to let go of what doesn't help us, Look, if it's not something that's helping us to keep moving and to keep our eyes open and to receive more fully what the Lord wants to give, then it's not helping. Because the whole purpose of Lent is to lead us on this path that leads to the glory, not just that we can see, but that we can inherit and embrace and live. And so let's... Let's pray that God can help us uh, to do the work of, of setting out on this adventure, which is never easy. You know, it's, it's never easy to leave things behind. And sometimes what the Lord is asking us to leave behind may be dear to us. I mean, it might be a bad habit that we need to let go of, a sin, that's holding us back. That's possible. But it might also be a friendship of someone who, whom we love, but who isn't helping us. And in fact, it might even be a family member that we love dearly and who has played an important role in our life, but, but maybe they're stopping us from growing in our relationship with Christ. Those are the hard things that are sometimes very difficult to leave behind. And so whatever it is, let's ask the Lord to kind of search the depths of our hearts and help us to identify what is it that we need to let go of so that we can make our way up the mountain and both see and enter into that great glory that God has destined for us.